So at this point, you know how to do a linear approximation, which is just using a tangent line to approximate a function. And so if we approximate the function at x equals 0 with a tangent line, then the general form of the tangent line equation will be the f of 0 plus f prime at 0 x. So you notice that the tangent line has the same initial value as the original function. When x equals 0, this term will cancel out, and the, the y value is just f of 0, which is the same as the function that we're trying to approximate. And if we take the first derivative of the tangent line equation, we get f prime 0, which is the same as the first derivative of the original function. So the initial value and the first derivative of this tangent line matches those of the original function. So they start at the same point, and they are also both either increasing or both decreasing based on the first derivative. But as you can see here, when we approximate this curve with a tangent line, this curve, after this initial point, it bends up. So a tangent line is not very accurate. So we can make a tangent line approximation more accurate by making it a quadratic approximation. So we're no longer using a tangent line, but a, we're using a parabola. So we can make it so that in addition to the initial value and the first derivative, the second derivative of the original and approximating functions will also match. So that way they will have the same concavity. So they will both bend the same way. So the general form of a quadratic approximation at x equals 0 is given by this. And you can see if you differentiate it twice, you'll just get f double prime 0. So the second derivatives match. So if we want to make a linear and quadratic approximation of e to the x around x equals 0, well, all the derivatives of e to the x are just e to the x. So all the derivatives will have the same value of 1 when x is equal to 0. So the linear approximation will be the initial value 1 plus 1 times x. And the quadratic approximation will be 1 plus 1 times x plus 1 times x squared divided by 2. So we can keep raising the order of these approximating functions. You know, we can make one where the third derivative matches, or the fifth, or the tenth, or the fiftieth. And so if we make n of these derivatives match, then we can write a Maclaurin polynomial. A Maclaurin polynomial is just an approximation of a function around x equals 0 so that the first n derivatives match. So we can make n as large as we want, assuming that the original function is differentiable n times. So this is the general form of a Maclaurin polynomial. We have the nth derivative of f at 0 divided by n factorial times x to the n power. So if you differentiate this you'll see that all the, you know, the second derivative, the third derivative, and so on will match up to the original function. So let's write the fifth Maclaurin polynomial for sine of x. So if they say the fifth Maclaurin polynomial, that means you go until n equals 5. So the first thing we do is differentiate a uh, original function 5 times and then find the value of all of these derivatives at x equals 0. So you can see for the sine function, it will alternate between 0, 1, and negative 1. And then once we have all these values, we just put them in the expression for a Maclaurin polynomial, and we get the approximating function. So Maclaurin polynomials uh, only work at x equals 0. 
if we make x any other point, say x naught, which just represents uh, whatever our initial x value is, then that's called a Taylor polynomial. And so the expression is the same, except instead of x, we have x minus x naught. So you can see that the Bernoulli polynomial is just a Taylor polynomial when x naught is equal to 0. So let's find the fourth Taylor polynomial. So we're going to n equals 4 of the function ln x around x equals 2. So first we write the first four derivatives of ln x. And then we just find the value of those when x is equal to 2. And then once we have all these values, we just put them in the expression for a Taylor polynomial. And this is our approximating function. So, you know, everything, all the approximating functions, you know, Maclaurin, quadratic and linear are just special cases of a Taylor polynomial. You know, a linear approximation is just a Taylor polynomial, but you only go up to this point when n is equal to 1. So we can write Taylor and Maclaurin polynomials as a series if we use sigma notation. So we start the index at k equals 0, which, so we say that the 0th derivative of f would just mean the initial value. And then we go until n, which is whatever we want it to be. And so if we take the limit as n approaches infinity, then we have an infinite series, and then it's called a Taylor or Maclaurin series. So since Taylor and Maclaurin polynomials are just approximations, we want to know how accurate these approximations are. So the nth remainder is the error in approximation between the nth Taylor polynomial and the va actual value of the original function. So it's the original function minus a Taylor polynomial. So the difference between these two is our error in approximation. And we can find a bound for the nth remainder, which tells us how accurate this approximation is. And this is called the Lagrange error bound. So if we have the original function that we're trying to approximate, f of x, and this function is differentiable n plus 1 times, and m is an upper bound for the n plus 1 th derivative of f of x. You know, upper bound means this, the de n plus 1 derivative of f of x will always be less than or equal to this upper bound. Then our uh, nth remainder, the error in approximation, will always be less than or equal to this upper bound over n plus 1 factorial times x minus x naught to the n plus 1 power. And you'll do more with the, this error bound and these Taylor and McLaurin series later.